Hello everyone. In this video I'd like to talk about what the Kratky method is. The Kratky method is a hydroponic method. That means the plants grow in water rather than in soil. What makes the Kratky method unique is its simplicity. There is no aeration, no water movement, and generally there is no reason to change the nutrient solution. That is, in theory, if you set everything up correctly and you're growing only leafy greens. If you are growing flowering or fruiting plants, then you will need to add nutrients and water as it is used up by the plant. The pure form of the Kratky method does not call for adding more water or nutrients. It is more a set it and forget it method. Let me show you some plants that I've grown using this method. Here you can see my lettuce plants. I grow these on a regular basis since they grow very quickly and we eat them even faster than we can grow them. The Kratky method is an excellent method for growing leafy green vegetables. Fruiting plants are a little more difficult but it can be done. Here's my cucumber plant. I have flowers starting to develop on this plant after three months of growing in this container. And here are my tomato plants. More about this later, but first let's talk about the Kratky method. So basically the Kratky method is a method of growing plants in water without any special equipment. It was developed by Dr. Bernard Kratky from the University of Hawaii. Here is his bio page from the University of Hawaii website. There's a nice picture of Dr. Kratky on the university website and his academic credentials are listed. They also list his publications here. You can see from his publications that he doesn't call it the Kratky method, but rather he refers to it as a non-circulating hydroponic method. So how does it work? Well, to get started, you need a plant or a small seedling. I usually start my seedlings in rock wool. Here's what rock wool looks like. As you can see, it comes in small cubes with holes to put the seeds in. This package has one and a half inch cubes. They come in different sizes, but I find this size works for my lettuce, tomatoes, and cucumbers. Rock wool is made from basalt rock and chalk that are melted at 1600 degrees Celsius into a lava, which is then pulled into cotton candy-like fibers. The fibers are then compressed into these cubes. The high temperature that produces the rock wool renders it sterile, so it is perfect to use as a growing medium. You will need to soak the rock wool in water until it is saturated and then just drop a seed down the hole. Once you have seedlings like you see here, you are ready to transplant. Now if you're using traditional planting methods, this is the point where you would put the plant into soil, but not with the Kratky method. We take the young seedling in its rock wool cube and plant it in water instead, using a net cup like this. You can make your own net cups using plastic drinking cups, but these are easily available on Amazon and not expensive. I have them in two sizes. Here you can see the two inch net cups for smaller plants. These fit nicely into the smaller mason jars and are perfect for my lettuce plants. And here you can see the three inch net cups that fit into the larger mason jars and also fit perfectly into this Folgers coffee container. When I found out that the three inch net cups fit into the Folgers containers, I was very excited since these containers have a small little window so I can check up on the water level. I also drink a lot of coffee so now that bad habit goes for a good purpose. So now we are ready to place the young plant into the net cup, still in the rock wool. I put some clay pebbles around the rock wool to fill in the empty space and to keep light from getting down into the water. The clay pebbles are not necessary, but they do add stability to the rock wool cube in the net cup. Now I place the entire net cup into a jar or some sort of reservoir filled with water. The water has a hydroponic nutrient solution to help feed the plants the nutrients they would normally get from the soil. For my lettuce plants, I use this, the Grow Big Hydroponic Solution from Fox Farms. It is really easy to mix. Just shake and add two teaspoons to a gallon of water. For fruiting or flowering plants, such as cucumbers or tomatoes, I like to use the Master Blend formula. This is a little more complicated since it has three parts to be mixed. Also, the recipe on the bag gives the amount to be mixed into five gallons of water. 
I don't like carrying around five gallons of water, it's a little heavy for me, so I use this kitty litter plastic container and measure into it two and a half gallons of water. And then I add half the amount of the recipe. So following the recipe at half the measurements, I add six grams of calcium nitrate, then I mix it with water so that it dissolves completely. And then I add 6 grams of the Master Blend 41838 formula. And then after I've measured that, I dissolve that completely. And then I add 3 grams of magnesium sulfate, which is marketed as Epsom salt. This also needs to be dissolved in water. Once I have the solution mixed, I add it to the containers that I'm using, in this case the glass mason jars. When you are first transplanting the seedlings, the water level should be just to the bottom of the net cups. As the plant grows, it will drink up the nutrient-rich water and the roots will grow down into the water like you see here. As the water level goes down, the plant will put out what are called air roots and these roots help feed the plant the oxygen that it needs. That's why with this method you don't need an air pump. Now if you are growing lettuce or leafy greens, this method is fine because by the time the water is used up, the leafy greens are ready for harvesting. But fruit or flower bearing plants need the water to be replenished. When you do that, you risk drowning the plant if you refill the reservoir level too high. Make sure when you refill the reservoir to leave a good two inches of space for the plant roots to breathe. This is the number one reason plants die after the water level is replenished. The plant's main roots should be long enough to reach the water and the plant's air roots, like these ones, should stay up out of the water. Otherwise, you will drown your plant. That's it. Now let's take a look at my cucumber plant. Here you can see it is already flowering and soon it will produce cucumbers. The tomato plants have also started to flower and here you can see two little tomatoes. And the lettuce, that keeps growing and growing. If you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below so we can all learn from your experience. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Bye for now.